By now, you should be able to consider yourself a scientist of programming languages. So let's try to use what we've learned to be able to fully understand the programming model of JavaScript. So as you probably will uh, figure out by now, this expression in JavaScript equals to a, an array with a length 9. Uh, this is just to kind of poke fun at JavaScript. It, it is, it does have some possibly unjust, um, a lot of people are a bit mean to the programming language, but if you want to know a few more uh, jokes about that programming language, I highly recommend you to follow this link, which I'll try to link it on the YouTube video. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that, uh, but we'll see. I won't play it here, uh, but it is available. Well, no, it's not available on the, on the HTML version either. So you, you will just have to, to follow the link to, to be able to watch this amusing video of, of JavaScript semantics. Um, so today we will, essentially this last module is where we take everything that we've learned. We've learned uh, functional programming. We've learned uh, the abstraction of a Lambda declaration, passing Lambda as, as values or treating functions as values and the, the power of combinating them in libraries, such as, you know, filter, map, fold, um, and then monadic uh, patterns that we've learned as well. What I would like us to now do in the last module of this course is really to observe that other programming languages, they can actually be represented in terms of what we've learned in our uh, class, in our, in our course. So we learn how to design what you thought was bracket, but in reality is also the same basis could be used to implement JavaScript. And that's what I hope you will learn from this last module. So I'm going to introduce three main things, this module, I mean. The first thing is we're going to learn object-oriented programming as it is implemented in JavaScript, and we're going to implement that object system ourselves. Secondly, we're going to cover an academic paper. So we're going to follow, basically the implementation that we're going to do uh, is going to follow closely uh, an academic article. And the, the last project is really to write a compiler, which will produce code that can be run by a tool designed by the authors of this paper. And the tool is basically they implemented a reference implementation of JavaScript that underneath uses the lambda calculus that you have learned in this course. Finally, what we're going to do is basically this last part, which is the, the compiler I was just talking about, where you will learn how to compile, convert uh, JavaScript into this lambda JS the, that is uh, offered by the authors. Of the, of the paper, The Essence of JavaScript. All of this, we're going to continue using Racket, right? So we're going to continue developing in our uh, favorite programming language. Uh, so now a bit of, of JavaScript, or, or what is JavaScript? As you know, JavaScript is everywhere because it's in your browsers. It's probably in your phones. Well, it's certainly on your phones since you have a browser there. <laughs> but also even some applications that you may have on your phone are implemented using JavaScript. A lot of um, online games have it. Well, it's basically everywhere. Um, there's one very nice thing about JavaScript, in my opinion, which is not just its accessibility. You know, any browser has a JavaScript you can program in basically anywhere. Uh, but also, it has a very elegant object system, in my opinion. And I hope you will appreciate that in this in this course. Uh, so it is very minimal, yet very powerful. And as you can see, it is able to represent most popular object-oriented programming patterns. Uh, JavaScript is actually technically called ECMAScript. Um, but if you're curious to know, just read this text and follow the source for more information. Uh, actually, for the rest of the course, we're just going to call it JavaScript. 
So what are we learning in this course? We're going to learn the language mechanics. So basically the, the core, the fundamentals, the things that make JavaScript JavaScript, not really the, the frameworks. We're not really interested in that or how to use them. That's up to you if you're very curious in that, in doing that. So essentially what we're going to learn is how they represent an object. How do they represent variable binding, inheritance, mutation, and functions. And then what is the interaction between functions and objects? So what are we not covering? Well, we're not covering the APIs. For instance, we're not covering the DOM, uh, no promises, no async, no awaits, although this is very uh, popular in JavaScript. We're not going to be talking about control flow, how to implement a UI loop or anything like that. If you're curious, uh, you can read the paper that I'm going to present in the next few slides where they cover the, the transformations required. Uh, we're not going to be covering exceptions. Uh, we're not going to be covering JavaScript best practices. We're not really interested in any of that. The various difference between the various versions of JavaScript, we're really not interested in that. And also, also, we are not really interested in a, a very faithful implementation of ECMAScript. We're really just trying to do a certain, a simplistic version of JavaScript that still captures the, the what is covered in this slides. So the the paper that we're going to study was published in eCoop again in two thousand and ten, uh, and this paper uh, basically is representing the core of JavaScript in terms of Lambda Calculus. And Lambda Calculus is basically what you've been implementing. Uh, and the beauty of that is that the notion of environments that you've been learning actually has a very close match to the object model of JavaScript, which is perhaps surprising. So in this paper, they introduce, the authors introduce Lambda JS which is this Lambda Calculus extension. So Lambda, again, uh, just to recap, just to make sure everyone is on the same page, the, when I say the Lambda Calculus, usually what I mean is the Lambda uh, function declaration, function application, and the rule where you can apply you know, a function uh, and an argument. You can apply a function to an argument. So basically that rule that you've been implementing in, in three versions of, of our language, right? We have lambda E, lambda F, lambda S, lambda D. All of those, they, they talk about the lambda abstraction and function application. When we talk about lambda calculus, it's basically we're, we're talking about those two rules. And then what lambda JS talks about is how do you extend the lambda calculus to support JavaScript? So the paper is available in, in this URL. If you click on it, you will get basically this. And I invite you to read it. I hope that you are now able to follow along some of the rules. As you can see, it has the same style as what we've been learning so far. I am going to show it to you. Um, they do have some ex examples for you to understand a bit better if you're curious, but you don't actually need to read the paper. I will kind of summarize the paper for you, but I invite you to do it if you're curious. So again, our final project will be to translate a simplified language that we call SimpleJS into this LambdaJS, which is actually one of the contributions of the, the paper in question. So one of the things that the authors do is they, they explain how to translate from JavaScript into LambdaJS. What we are doing is basically the essence of that translation that is introduced in this paper. So the paper, in, just to recap, the paper is introducing a kind of like a compiler, which we usually say translation function, and I'll clarify that in the next few slides. Um, so what we're writing is a compiler from SimpleJS to LambdaJS. Basically what we're doing is we're following what the authors have introduced in this paper. Okay, so this is more the more researchy uh, part of, of this course. Basically, the last module is a research project. Okay, so here are some definitions just to make sure everyone is clear about what I mean. 
So when I say a translator, or I say a translation function, I'm referring to the process of convert, converting terms of one language into terms of another language. It could possibly be the same language, right? So basically what I'm saying is I have an AST of one type, and then I generate another AST. It could be the same type or another type, right? So it could be different languages. So when I say terms, I am referring to the AST, right? When basically those structures that, that represent the logical representation of a programming language. So what a compiler does is it uses, it basically translates. So a compiler is an implementation of a translation function, which translates a source language into a target language. Generally, generally, the target language is at the machine level, but it doesn't have to be. Syntactic desugaring is the process of converting syntactic abbreviations uh, into fundamental terms of the same language. So it's basically when we say desugaring is just decomposing syntactically, you're still working on the same programming language, right? So you can also think of it as a source to source translator. What is a source to source translator? It is a translation function whose source and target languages are the same. And it, usually you, they are referring to higher level languages. That is to say, not machine level languages. Transpiler is an unfortunate name that has been popularized by the JavaScript community. It just means source to source translator. Please never use it. Polyfill is um, basically, you can, it is a source to source translator uh, and performs syntactic desugaring. Of Java, usually it's it's quite common in Java in the JavaScript community. Polyfill, what it does is you have an old browser doesn't support a lot of features. So what do you do? Well, you write a compiler that takes the code that you would like to write and converts it into equal representations of old version JavaScript that is able to run in older browsers. Okay, so that's what the polyfill is doing. It's a source to source translator. Right, and oftentimes what it's doing is just syntactic desugaring. So that is to say, you will have some new versions of JavaScript have more abbreviations that are just for the programmer. They don't change anything in terms of the semantics of how things work. They just make things easier to write. And for that, again, that is syntactic desugaring when the process of taking things that are easy to things that already existed in the language. Uh, so that is a source to source translator. Polyfill, that's what it provides. So if you ever heard of these terms, here is a short definition of what each uh, means. Okay, so now in the rest of, of uh, the, the course, the, not the course, the lecture, what I want to do is I want to introduce the basics of JavaScript, kind of like I introduced the basics of Racket in the first few lessons. And then I'm going to introduce the basics of Lambda JS, which is going to be very close to what you've learned because it's going to be very similar to the language that we learn in homework four. Okay. Then I'm going to relate the functionalities that are found in JavaScript with the ones that are found in Lambda JS. And finally, I'm going to end the lecture by listing Lambda JS, the AST. Okay, written in in rec, just so you see that it's not very far out from what you already know.